I get a lot of questions, people asking me how to parallel batteries. Um, now, people buy the batteries at different times or from different suppliers, right? Here's a whole lot of batteries that we're busy testing all together over here. Now, they're all 5.1 kilowatt hours. They all got the same voltage range. They're all 16 S cells. Now, um, many people, when they parallel batteries, they get a fault. You know, they get a battery, brand new battery out the box that they ordered at the same time or a different time even. But some of them may have been uh, charged to different levels in the factory. So what happens is you cannot simply just parallel batteries and hope that they're going to sort each other out. Okay, Each of these guys have got BMSs inside them that are protecting from overcharge and over-discharge, overcurrent, etc. For example, here is a battery over here. Um, <clears throat> here is a battery. Obviously, a, they labeled it wrong. On is this way, off is that way. And I've got them disconnected over here. I want, you to, I want to show you, I've connected all the negatives together, but I haven't connected the positives together. And uh, you'll see that some batteries are going to alarm because these ones are very, very low voltage. And the moment I parallel, they're at 42 volts. So they're also 5.1 kilowatt hours, the same voltage range as all the others. But if I parallel these up, something's got to give, okay? Because um, you cannot parallel a 42 volt battery with one sitting at uh, 50 something volts. So let's go ahead and just measure across the top battery over there. And we'll see that that one says 52 point, excuse the reflection, 52.69. Let's go to the one just below that. And that's 52 volts, okay? So what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna show you, put a current clamp meter on here. I'll put it in on DC amps. If I can get my finger to Turn it, six on the 60 amp range. One more. Set it to DC amps. You'll see there's an offset that we need to zero out. Okay. And now I'm going to stick this over this. Um, if you can hold that there for me. Stick that meter. Or stick it on the negative. That's even good. And these two batteries are on. All right. So let's have a look. Enter, wake that one up. Let's enter to wake this one up. And you'll notice that they both... Uh, this one showing pack 52.75, this one showing 52.5. Notice the current when I touch these two batteries together. Okay, these are pretty close together, so we're not going to get too much. But you'll notice that the one battery, this is, so three, three amps are drawn from here. And well, it's 2.2 amps and 1.9 amps, it's dropping all the time. The two of them are saying, so... The one that's more fully charged is discharging into the one that's less fully charged. These batteries are pretty close, so 1.6 amps is nothing, okay? But I'm going to pause the video here. Okay, I'm going to put my meter back to DC volts, and I'm going to measure these batteries over here, all right? And I've taken the labels off so that um, you guys are going to measure over here. So... If I measure there between those two batteries, I'm getting only 42 volts, okay? So now if I put a 42 volt battery in parallel with a 50 something volt battery, let's see what happens, okay? Okay, so, so we don't have confusion here. I just want that display to come on. And I don't have the top battery tied to the bottom one. I just have this battery by itself. You can see it's happy at 52 volts. And this one over here we just measured was 40 something volts, all right? So the moment I, I want to want you to watch this fault light over here specifically. The moment I put these two batteries in parallel, that fault light is going to trip pretty soon. Because there's hundreds of amps trying to flow back from this, one, from this battery over here into here. And that's going to cause a fault. There we go. This battery went into alarm straight away. So we overloaded this battery by charging this one, okay? So how do we get all these batteries balanced? It's, it's a difficult task, and it's not just something by hooking things up in parallel, all of a sudden they're magically going to uh, get balanced, okay? So here's some techniques, some first world and some third world techniques. Excuse the rain in the background, it's busy falling, I'm trying to film this thing while, um, while the rain's not falling. Okay, 
So if we're going to measure, let's measure, we've already measured 42. Okay, we've already measured 42 volts over here. This battery is like a critical low level, all right? If I turn on my power supply. Okay, so here's a first world solution is to get a power supply. Here's a DC power supply. This one is 120 volts. You might not want to get something like that. But I'd get a 0 to 60 volt power supply, 0 to 5 amps. Okay, you can find them on eBay for about 70 to 80 dollars. And you'll notice that this is connected up to the battery right here. The battery's in fault mode. And we can change this output voltage to whatever. Okay, so we want to set it no more than 56 volts. 56.5 volts. Then I'm going to reset this battery. And you'll notice that when I reset it, I'm just going to keep my eye on over here. As we turn the battery back on. All right, and as the BMS is still is still open circuit right now, the moment the BMS kicks on, we're going to see the actual battery voltage is going to pull this down. All right, give it a few seconds until we hear a click. There we have. So this battery voltage is actually 43 volts, and we see that it's charging at 3.17 amps. Okay, so what the the first world is to do is to get a power supply like this. Connect it up to the battery, whichever battery it is, and with the others were at 52 volts or so. Let this thing charge, set the amps up, let the voltage set the voltage to like 56 volts or whatever the other battery's voltage is, and leave it for 20 hours or so. If this is a 100 amp hour battery and you're charging at 3 amps and it's fully flat to get it from empty to full, it's going to be 100 divided by 3 is roughly 30 hours to charge the battery fully from this power supply okay so let's have a look at the other battery below it this one's 43.6 volts the other one below it um, the other one below it is slightly more I've been running it on for a few hours already and that one that's the actual battery voltage there right now it's um, charged to 56.4 okay so we cannot parallel these two batteries together right now. They're going to go into fault mode, and I'll show you that because obviously this one's empty and this one's nearly full. So I'm going to connect the negatives together. All right, I'm going to remove the power supply, and I'm going to connect the positives together, and immediately you're going to see these two batteries go into fault mode. There we go fault straight away okay so that's the patient way of doing things balancing the cells first with the power supply simply leaving these two batteries paralleled in the hopes that one is going to charge up with the other while it's in fault mode it will not this battery is completely disconnected so it will not allow charging at all okay so we got to that's that's the first world method now I'm going to show you the third world method which is uh, the way we're heading pretty quickly um, so we need to understand how to do these little hacks. So what, I, what we need is a resistor between the two of them over there. Now, if you want to go buy a resistor from eBay, maybe a 1 or 2 ohms, 50 watt resistor, you can do that. Otherwise, you can grab some Cat5 cable. <laughs> so I got a roll of Cat5 cable. I'm a bit of an e-bike junkie. So um, these are pretty cool. They, you got to lean forward when you ride them. Otherwise, you'll flip off. Um, they're little e-time motorcycles. They've got a 12 kilowatt motor in them. But uh, anyway, grab some Cat5 cable. I'm digressing. Uh, get about, um, I'd say about 6 feet. 6 to 12 feet, and then we're going to cut it. Okay, we've got 10 feet. But this is going to be Cat5 cable that you don't like, okay? Because it's a good chance that it's going to get overheated. And um, you could strip it out of the plastic as well to help it to heat, uh, cool off a little bit better. But I'm just going to take one strand for now. All we're doing is we're making a third world resistor. Okay. Um, and let me show you what happens if you just use a crocodile clip. Good old fashioned crocodile clip. And let's see what happens if we reset this battery's BMS. Okay. Give it a few seconds. All right. Just showing you the type of amps going through here. Once that baby clicks on, give it a few seconds. Okay, you see that cable? 
it's just melting, all right? So, so this crocodile clip, I mean, this little skinny cable is just going to melt, all right? But your thick bus bars, they're not going to melt. So what we're doing is we're just simply making a longer version of this wire to allow the amps to take some time to get from one to the other. Yeah, this crocodile clip is pretty much roasted. There's the cable that melted out and snapped off. Okay. Okay, so we found another crocodile clip that hasn't been burnt yet. And you'll notice we've jumped at the negatives. It's okay jumpering the negatives on all your batteries as long as you don't jump at the positives together. So this negative goes to there and all the negatives have jumped. So I'm going to just take my crocodile clip over there and connect it up to my uh, through my 10 feet of Cat5 wire over there. And let's have a look. Oops. Essentially, we just made a resistor. So now we only have three amps going through instead of hundreds of amps. So if we left that now for a, a, a day or so, um, we can get these batteries balanced up together. Okay? So this is what I'm proposing you do. So not all your batteries, like the Pites batteries, have these Amphenol connectors. You can use crocodile clips or make up something with the battery cables running through a length of 10 feet of Cat5 uh, wire. If you want to speed things up, you can parallel two together. You just don't want the Cat5 cable, obviously, to burst into flame. Okay, that's the, that's the aim of the game. So here's a neat little trick you can do if you're going to parallel batteries like this together, is I'd simply take this cable off or join all the negatives together on the bus bar Take some Cat5 cable, a 10-foot length, a single strand, and just screw it into that terminal behind there and spiral it up and screw it into the next one and just keep going with all your batteries to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And so that they've got some time and some resistance to kind of balance each other out. And obviously, you want these batteries not to be charging and discharging all the time, okay? Otherwise... If you've got your solar coming into one battery and you're trying to get the others to catch up, the others will never catch up because this one is charging and discharging at a different rate, and these are going through a resistor to try and charge the others. Okay, so that's a simple little hack to get your batteries paralleled up together. You can see this is still going pretty well. It's going to take three. This is only three amps. So three amps at a 100 amp hour battery is going to take like 30 hours just to balance two batteries. So you can just keep going with um, with your Cat5 cable or another skinny wire. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have, have any other suggestions, let me know. But um, we need to understand the third world solutions as well because um, we, we're moving into times where we cannot just buy everything off the shelf that we um, that we desire. We need to start thinking outside the box. Thank you. Okay, so a couple of hours later, I managed to parallel the two batteries together. They're fine. But now I'm, I'm, now I'm charging these two batteries to the same level as the two batteries above it. Let's look at the voltage on the bo to bottom two batteries. Okay, so these are at 48 volts at the bottom. And let's have a look at the top batteries over there. And we're sitting at 52 volts. So we have a few more hours to go. But we're getting there. So our Cat5 cable is just warm to the touch. And very soon, once we kind of get to the 52 volt range, and we can just hit this positive terminal from here, directly clip it in there, and we should be good to go. Now we'll see just that um, few volt difference. We're getting a 3 amp draw through the um, Cat5 homemade resistor. I mean, you can double the pairs if you want to. My little crocodile clip wires cannot handle much more than 3 amps anyway. Um, as you saw, the other one burnt up. They're pretty, like, warmish. Um, so, one strand, a 10 foot or 6 foot, I think you're good. Noisier now, but in order, we had the same things when we connected some more of these Pites batteries in parallel. We had the top one alarming all the time. That was a new one to the, to the mix. We had to bring that one up to the same voltage as the others before we could parallel them. And here we've got Pites in parallel with SOK in parallel with um, trophy batteries they all work together quite nicely sometimes a customer will buy a battery uh, that cannot communicate with their inverter there is no harm getting a battery that can work with your inverters and paralleling with all the others that cannot 
In, the, in this case, obviously, the Pites batteries can communicate with GrowWatt and MPP Solar and SolArc, etc. SOK is too. Uh, we're working with the Trophy batteries to try to get them to communicate as well. So, um, yeah, this is our test jig. Lots of cables everywhere. It's not going to look like this at your place. But um, it is possible. Just to show you, it is possible to parallel dissimilar batteries together. A lot of guys buy the, um, the three-letter brand batteries. Well, except for the SOK, and uh, cannot communicate with uh, most other things. And um, so just by adding a few batteries that can in parallel with the ones that cannot, you can connect your inverter to the batteries that can and uh, get the communication and status charge that way.